How to design the Scotia Detail. What is a Scotia? Pronounced Scotia or Scotia. Common in classical architectural moldings, the Scotia is a concave trim, especially used at the base of columns. To create this unique shape, use the 30 part module of measurement for Roman classical orders. 60 parts equal the diameter of the column. One part in this video is one inch, but you may use one centimeter, one millimeter, or even one foot parts to achieve the same result. The magic of classical architecture is that the proportions remain constant no matter what scale you employ, whether in metric or imperial dimensioning. The key to this detail is in its Greek origin, where skotos means darkness. A scotia is a deep and compound curve that produces a dark shadow as light washes over and past its recesses. It emphasizes detail by this visual cue. Take a look at the following three images of the ionic column base that contains two scotias. The first image is without directional light. You can see that the scotia allows an elegant shading that runs along its lower arc. Add a light direction and the scotia delivers a fine underscore above the lit portion. With direct sunlight and distinct shadows, the light now softly bends across the scotia shape and provides definition. The following method to draw the scotia detail is taken from W.W. W. Turner's 1930 book, Fundamentals of Architectural Design. Two distinct arcs comprise the scotia profile. There is a larger arc below, tangent to a tighter arc above it. You start with a set of four guidelines. One, the lower line. Two, the upper line at three and one-third parts above the lower. Three, a left-hand guideline, and finally, four, a right-hand guideline, three parts over. First, label the lower left corner A, and the upper right corner B. Draw a straight line between points A and B. Give your configuration an extent by boxing off to the right. The next point we establish is C, which is the center between A to B. Create a circle that has the diameter AB. If you are using SketchUp, like here, give your circle at least 96 sides because the default of 24 larger segments will distort the shape. If you use physical tools, it's a precise scribe. Pay close attention because here it gets tricky. Set a guideline at 30 degrees angled upward from point A and draw that line segment to meet the circle you made in the previous step and call this point D. Now, we want an equilateral triangle using the AD segment. First, draw a vertical line up from point A. While there's more than one way to make the final triangle segment, here we will scribe another circle of 96 sides with D as its center point. Where that circle meets the vertical line coming up from point A delivers the last part of the equilateral triangle and we mark it as point E. You can now carefully erase your construction circles. From point E, create a new circle with 96 sides in SketchUp where its reach passes between point A and D. This arc establishes the lower portion of the scotia. The next arc completes the scotia shape, and it's easy to create. Drop a vertical line from point B until it meets the upper right side of the equilateral triangle and call this point F. Point F is the center of your final arc reaching between point A and point D. Start to eliminate the extraneous construction lines. The Scotia shape is complete. Creating the final intersection of the two arcs in SketchUp is not precise 
because there is no true curved shape in the software. Circles and arcs are segments. Taking a closer look at the final joint where the arcs meet reveals two very close segments of the arcs we created. By visual appearance, we determine that the inner arc of the overlap, not the outer, is best for the overall appearance of this detail. Though tiny, there is a perceptible difference between the two. Add the upper and lower fillets, which are flat planes, at one half of a part tall to complete this detail. In SketchUp, when you extrude the Scotia shape, the intersection of the arcs leaves a visible line. You can simply hide that line to confirm the uninterrupted Scotia shape. 